And we're back here on Inside Black and Gold, brought to you by the Lamarck Automotive Complex. There must be a reason, and there also must be a reason why the Saints played so badly in this game. We're going to get into some of the studs, but, you know, there weren't that many of them, so it's going to be mostly about the duds here from Week 7, a 42-34 to loss, an eight-point loss that's way more generous than it should be um, for the Saints. And so let's start with you, Steve. And we'll start with the positives because there's not going to be that many. Um, <laughs> but let's start with who was your stud from the week seven debacle that was out in Glendale? Well, I feel the need, the need for Rashid. Rash- Man, Rashid Shahid has been awesome. I just wish we would see more of him. Obviously, now his second touch. Uh, opens the the game for the Saints with a huge touchdown. And is that we talk about spark, we talk about energy, uh, just seems to be that guy, that se- a, a special uh, presence there. And I just wish we got to see more of him. Unfortunately, he did have uh, a small mishap, I guess you would say, in the return game where the turf monster got him, where it looked like he had a decent return ahead of him. But all in all, uh, Rashid Shahid's been a huge plus, and I just want to get him more involved in this offense. Uh, just two touches seems pretty absurd to me. Yeah, it's funny because you could have gone with either of his names on that kind of the the, the little catchphrase you have for him. Uh, so you went with Rashid. I would have gone with Shahid, but either way, you got an Eid in there, and it works. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, he he has had one of the more remarkable starts to his Saints career. In that, uh, I don't know if you could be more efficient. If you're if you're one of those on pace for people, Rashid Shahid is currently on pace for six carries for 264 yards and six touchdowns, a, a clean 44 yards a carry, and six catches for 318 yards and six touchdowns, a clean 53 yards per reception. So, at this point, you know the 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 you know the facts will tell you that if you Give Rashid the ball. He's going to get all the way to the end zone and he will not get tackled. I mean, that, that's just that's just the numbers. The numbers don't lie. Um, right. But yeah, so this is the second consecutive game. Rashid Shahid has had a long touchdown in the first quarter and then not touched the ball again. He played 10 snaps in this game. That's up one from a week before. You know, I, I had people tell me, well, he's not worked into the game plan, whatever. You know, you don't, you don't need to be worked into the game plan to be the person getting the ball on a particular play, right? I, I get it. You, you know, the, his route tree is limited. So you're not going to say, oh, you need to force him five, six targets. But, you know, why not give him another fly sweep, right? Well, why not call another fly sweep and see what he can do, right? You don't need to call six of them. <laughs> but like, find a way to get the ball in his hands. Get in the ball on a screen, you know, do something to, to incorporate this, your, your, this dynamic athlete into your offense. And doing it once is great you can't just do it once and say, yep. Yeah, okay. See you next week. Like that can't happen. Um, the one stat that I thought was interesting, Rashid Shahid joins Marquise Brown, Marquise Hollywood Brown, the, the Cardinals yeah. player who wasn't there um, as the only two players dating back to 1991, which is when kind of the, the stats are, are reliable. They're the only two players to score 40 plus yard touchdowns on their first two career touches. That's unreal, right? Which is just kind of a it's wild that they can even find that stat that fast. But you know, that's I guess that's, be, how, that's how impactful he's been. It'd be even more ironic, I guess, if Brown was active for that game. Well, yeah, right. It was it's funny that it happened against the Cardinals and, and Hollywood Brown wasn't there. You know, he's basically just like it's like a space jam thing where he just like sapped all of his powers and yeah, now it's Rashid with those powers. But yeah, no, he's He's been excellent. I'd like to see him do a little more in the return game, right? Like I'd like to see him, you know, the, I didn't expect the long touchdowns out of him. I expected more of an impact in the return game. Yeah. And so you're hoping he can be more impactful there. But yeah, I mean, he is what you, what you see the vision with him for sure. And now we know for sure why this team was, we, we talked about hiding him in the preseason and didn't want other teams to get a glimpse of what this guy's capable of. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean it's he's 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 a special a special type of athlete, and you got to find a way to get him more involved. Now, my stud is a, another rookie, um, and I think all you need to know about uh, this player's performance is that it actually managed to get a slight bit of emotion out of Dennis Allen, which 
to this point, I wasn't sure it was possible. Um, but, but here that is, but here's that. Yeah. I, I really liked what I supplied to him. Um, I saw a guy that, that freaking fought and competed on every single play. And that's, that's really what we base what we do here defensively around is guys going out and fighting and competing. And I thought he challenged on every single play and, and he didn't win every one of them, but I thought he challenged on every single one of them. So I was impressed with his performance and, and certainly, um, you know, if he stays healthy, uh, I see him being a part of what we're trying to do as we move forward. Wow, Coach Allen saying freaking. Yeah. He, he's freaking, he's, he's fired freaking up. passionate on that one, huh? Uh, yeah, and obviously he's talking about Alante Taylor, the rookie out of Tennessee. The same Alante Taylor that everyone told me was a terrible pick because the Saints were so stacked at, at quarterback that he was never going to see the field, and they just wasted a second-round draft pick on a special teams player. Well, you needed him in week seven. It only took seven weeks for you to get the for, – for the reason you drafted Alante Taylor to become obvious – right? You can never have too many quality defensive backs on your roster. They get hurt. They miss games. You need them. And for a guy to just come off of injured reserve, he missed four weeks and came back and got thrown directly into the fire against DeAndre freaking Hopkins. And I thought he had an excellent game. You know, he, he didn't win them all. Like, like DA said, you know, he had some rough reps, he, but he was targeted five times in coverage. He allowed one catch for 17 yards. He stood up on a third down play to DeAndre Hopkins on the first drive. I think it was the second drive that he got targeted in the end zone against Rondale Moore, and he ended up drawing an offensive pass interference that ended that and forced a field goal. Later in the game, he was stride for stride with Robbie Anderson down the field. Uh, he played 100% of the snaps in that game. And like you mentioned, he went off the field, you know, with a cramp at one point, but he did not miss a snap. And you don't, you know, you don't really need to go too deep to find the explanation for why he was cramping. I mean, you know, he was in there giving it his all for the entire game. And for perspective, Chris Harris on the other side was targeted six times. He allowed four catches and drew and was flagged twice. Like, so one of the reasons you, you know, early in the game, they were going at a lot they were going at the rookie, but it, by the end of the game, they were like, yeah, you know what? We're going to go try to target Chris Harris uh, because he, Alante was playing that well. And, you know, I, I think for all the things that went badly for, you know, as as brutal as the defense has been, um, you know, one of the reasons it feels so drastically bad right now is because you do not have quality young depth at those positions, right? At a lot of positions. But with Alante Taylor looking like, exactly what you thought he was as a second round pick at cornerback. It makes you feel a little better about the defense as you go forward and you have to make some really difficult decisions um, in, in how you can start to fix this. And what also I've been impressed with, with Taylor since, you know, we got to see him from the start of training camp and going leading up into the season with everything uh, is obviously the air of confidence he has about himself. Uh, very well spoken. And you could just tell has, a great football mind, and obviously you need that. Uh, you, you need that on this defense uh, for sure. But he just seems someone that is able to at that cornerback position to when there is that bad play to put it aside and and get up for the next one. Uh, like you said, there was a lot of controversy, or at least um, Criticism. a lot of anger towards the pick when you know the Saints went after him, going, "Oh, he's just going to be a, a special teams contributor." in year one. Well, we're seeing a lot more from that right now and definitely how worthy he was of being that second, second round pick for this team. Yeah. And he, and he is a, also a quality special teams contributor and you right. need those two when you see how bad this special teams unit has been, you know, like that's important. Um, but yeah, when you talk to him, he does not seem like a rookie, you know, like, no. like you can usually tell when you're talking to a rookie and like, you're still kind of get, getting the, getting the ropes of like how to talk to the media and how to present themselves and like how to answer certain questions. I mean, he, he looks like a guy who's been doing it for years. Um, right. Some guys, think you gonna, think they look like they're going to be a quality player, player in this league for a long time. I was going to say, yeah, some guys seem like they're, you know, like you said, that rookie being inexperienced, they're afraid to say something wrong. And Tay Taylor, there just, you know, always speaking what he's feeling. And he's, he, he's just, like I said, has that air of confidence and swag about him that you feel that you believe in him the way he believes in himself, I guess is the best way to say it. Yeah, and this also wasn't a one-off, right? Like, he looked really good. 
coming in uh, in relief of Marshawn Lattimore when Marshawn yeah. got ejected against the Bucks, right? Mm -hmm. Marshawn went out of the game. Tom Brady immediately, which, you know, you knew he was going to, right? Sure. Alante Taylor, the rookie, comes on the field, and Tom Brady immediately goes at him. He had two pass breakups in that game, right? He, he like, he kept the Saints alive late in that game by by forcing by forcing kicks and you know so you know he he played well in that game he hurt his knee in practice he missed four weeks comes back looks every bit like that was not a mirage he's going to be a good player and like da said he's going to be involved in the defense going forward so we're going to see a lot more of him i'm sure uh you know and it's just going to be a question of who's available if you can get some of these some of these other guys back but you know he's also a guy who you might you might incorporate into the slot so maybe even if you do get you know, both Marshawn Lattimore and Paul Sandibo back. He's still the guy you can get on the field in that way. Um, but let's let's go. We, we've talked enough. You know, I don't want to spend too much time talking about good things considering how badly <laughs> that game went. So, Steve, why don't you hit me with your first dud of uh, from week seven? I'm going with someone off the field. I know the players are there to make the plays, but for me, it's a guy not getting some players involved enough, and that's the offensive coordinator, Pete Carmichael Jr. What do you know? Taysom Hill actually had a reception this game, and it was a touchdown, but I feel like it was, wasn't was enough Taysom involvement. Uh, I, want to, I wanted to see more, and it seemed like in that second half of the game, I think he had two touches after halftime, and then we didn't see him again. I made a comment. I had to make sure number seven was still even on the sideline just because of his lack of involvement uh, with the game plan. I understand you're trying to play catch up and trying to stretch the field more uh, in that second half, but still, I, I don't know. I just, I need more Taysom. I, I know they talked about him, his rib injury still being an issue where he gets uh, sprayed with whatever before games to help numb the pain. So maybe you're trying to save your guy when the game was out of reach, but it just seems inexcusable to have one of your top weapons not involved at all. Yeah, I mean, I I don't I don't take as much as much issue with that. Just in the sense that, so in seven games this season, so he's missed one of them. Week three, he was limited, so you don't want to look too much into that. Week two, he suffered another rib injury. That's what Kaylee Hartung reported it. Uh, you know, during that game, is he had the rib injury in the preseason, and then he also cracked his rib again in week two, and that's what kept him out in week three. And so that's where he's been getting the numbing spray on the ribs. But even even beyond that, like, you know, if we want to complain, we could complain about the entire season. But he had got 25 percent of the 26 percent of the snaps in week one. He got 30 percent of the snaps in week five. That was the game against the Seahawks. He got 21 percent of the snaps in week six. Then he got 25 percent of the snaps in week seven. So if if that's their kind of goal for him is to get him on the field for like 20 to 35 percent of the snaps and also be included in a lot of special teams action. I think that's where that's where you're at, and I do think the 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 position you were in in that game played a role, right? Like this is a guy who you know is susceptible to injury, and you've seen it. He's also playing through a good bit of pain, and it's hard to ask a guy to play through an injury in a game you're losing by 20 points, and the quarterback is throwing pick six after pick six. Like, so I get it. I think if that game was closer, you'd have seen him more. Um, so I, I don't know. And I thought they were a little more creative with him in the first half, right? There was that one play where they stacked. Uh, Kevin White, Marquez Calloway, and, and uh, Camara, and he yeah. threw it out on the screen, and he got a first down. You know, they threw him the ball, which is something I was asking for. So, you know, I, I give him credit for that. You know, I, I and he did complete two passes. You know, one of them was a long one to Chris Olave. So I don't know. Like, I would take more issue with the Rashid part. Like, I actually I agree with the criticism of Pete Carmichael in the sense that, like, you know, Rashid Shahid should get more touches in a game, right? Rashid Shahid should get more than ten snaps, That's or at the very least, get a play That's call it. for him. And they didn't do that. And so I think there is still criticism of Pete Carmichael, even if I don't necessarily agree on the Taysom Hill part of it. Yeah, and I, going a little backtracking uh, to, I guess I'll give an honorable mention, Stud. Uh, you, you mentioned tight end. Jawan Johnson, a heck of a game for the Saints. Uh, I know this the, the team's hurting right now at the tight end position. But, you know, two scores for him. And I think he made five receptions. Uh, I know the team, the team just needs more output from that position. And I feel like he's done decent when called upon. He just doesn't get enough looks as well, I feel like. Yeah. Well, with, with Adam Troutman out, who knows how long he's going to be out, but he's, I'm sure he's going to be more involved. Uh, but you, 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 you stole my, my lane there, man. 
it's my turn to complain, and you decided to go back into positivity. We're not know, in positivity land right, right now. We're in negativity land. I thought about that. We're negative Nancy's at this part of the program, okay? <laughs> and to me, the biggest dud in this game, um, it's not Andy Dalton, although he did have his struggles, obviously. It's Marquez Callaway. It is a wide receiver who Andy Dalton loves. <laughs> he targets Marquez Callaway. He trusts him in big moments. And, you know, I think part of the reason you trust Marquez Callaway is because he has excellent hands. He has shown throughout his career that he has excellent hands. We saw it against the Panthers when he went up and just snagged a touchdown that, that really should have been an interception late in that game as the Saints tried to make a comeback. And, you know, for him to have the game he did, you know, you, you squarely in the dud column, you know, and I think he would agree. You know, the the he was the target on that initial touchdown in the red zone. You can't blame that on him, but he didn't. He didn't fight for the ball at the very least. You know, he was just kind of stayed covered. And that's been my biggest criticism of him prior to this game was he does not create separation well enough. He kind of stays covered way too often. And that's why, like, he makes a lot of spectacular catches, but it's because he has to make spectacular catches because he's never just wide open. And in this game, he finally did get open. On that pick six, he created separation. And it was almost like he was surprised by it. Because the ball came in, Andy Dalton, who we said earlier in the season, throws a very catchable ball. It's not coming in with the same pace as it might from Jameis. And so it's easier to catch. Well, maybe if it was coming a little faster, he wouldn't have popped it up in the air the way he did because it hit him directly in the hands. And then it just popped up in the air. And Marco Wilson, yes, that Marco Wilson, the formerly of LSU sh through showing uh, shoe throwing fame, Marco Wilson takes it and goes to the house. There was that really, I mean, you give credit to the photographer on that play because they had this incredible shot of Andy Dalton walking up the field, you know, <laughs> just with rage in his eyes and Marco Wilson like flying through the air into the end zone. It was, you know, like like the Cardinal Marco Wilson's going to have that framed over his fireplace, uh, not in, in the near future, I imagine. But, you know, that's not what you want to see from Marquez Callaway. And when I say Andy Dalton loves Marquez, you can see it on the next way, literally the next play right back to him, right back to him. <laughs> right back to him a couple plays later he goes to him down the sideline and Marquez gets the ball in his hand it gets dislodged it goes out of bounds gotta hold on to that ball like he had time to secure it and I, I get it he took a big hit but you know when you're the go when when you are now the goat of that game because you had that terrible play you gotta get your quarterback back and he had a chance to do it right there and he was not able to next play very next play Andy Dalton gets hit. You know, I still think he should have done a better job of being aware of the rush. Like, that's been my, one of my criticisms of him is, you know, I get it. He's getting hit. He's getting pressure. But, you know, it's like it's on the quarterback to some extent to be aware of where the pressure is coming from and to get the ball out or at the very least protect the ball. And, you know, if if Marquez Callaway catches that ball, you're probably running on that play, right? So uh, he gets this, gets hit. The ball ends up in Isaiah Simmons' hands. And the second that happened, you're like, well, shit. Because, you know, Isaiah Simmons might be the fastest guy on the field. Like, he, he if you're if you're throwing an interception to somebody in the middle of the field with nobody around him, you know, you just got to hope that he stumbles. Because Isaiah Simmons is going all the way, and that's what he did. Um, and, you know, Marquez, I think he had four catches. Or, let's see. Let me look it up. Star receivers that were the, that were the prime focus in the passing game. Both DeAndre Hopkins and Chris Olave had 14 targets. DeAndre caught 10 of them for 103 yards. Olave caught seven of his for 106 yards. His long came from actually from Taysom Hill. Um, that was that 41 yard catch and run. Um, but yeah, he's I think he's 10th in the league in targets this season. He's I want to say fifth in the league in, in receiving yards. He, he you know the Saints have played an extra game, but he hasn't. He's played roughly the same as everyone else because uh, he did miss that game. So you know. There's a few things you can say with positivity, and one is that the you know two of your top three rookies have been standout performers, and you you haven't seen Trevor Penning yet, but you have high hopes for him. So, you know, as you go forward, at the very least, you can say they this rookie class looks good. Um, but you know, the veterans don't. The veterans have been struggling, and I'm going to give an honorable dud to a position group because it's hard to pick one, but the interior D line. Absolutely. Has not done it. You know, David Onyemata is the is supposed to be the leader of that group. Have not heard his name nearly enough. You know, Eno Benjamin ran for 92 yards and a touchdown. You know, and, and Keontae Murray also had, I'm sorry, no, that's Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray ran for seven, uh, ran for 30 yards. And Keontae Ingram 
ran for 14 yards and had a really strong touchdown run and a, and a two point conversion. Um, so yeah, I mean, this just was an ugly, an ugly performance all around and we could sit here all day and, and talk about all the struggles. Um, like Nick Vanette finally got his chance, uh, and, and he couldn't hold up in the blocking game. So that's not a good look for him. Um, it's just, it just wasn't good. No, and I think one one of the big disappointments all season you just had mentioned, uh, and a guy like David Onyemata, uh, you know, he he went through that six game suspension last year, and so when he came back, there was a little bit of oh, he's just getting back in the motion, getting into game shape, knocking off that rust, but it just doesn't seem like he's ever returned to form pre, you know, pre suspension, and I I don't know maybe a guy that needed those performance enhancing drugs to be a factor because at this point, since coming back now, he has not been. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I know um, being, it's being a bit harsh, but I mean, what am I supposed to think right now? Yeah, well, he's not playing well, but, but I mean like the, I, we don't. So the reason I don't, I don't like that statement is, you know, in a lot of instances, the PEDs are like weight loss pills. Well, we, like we it, get... it doesn't mean he's, he was taking steroids. Like that's that's why I don't I don't like that statement because like you know remember remember with Deuce way back when with the right, star, the star caps cap. fiasco like right. like that's when you're saying performance enhancing substances all of that is lumped together right so like in, in a lot of cases with linemen you have weight um, weight clauses in your contracts and so you're trying to get under that and so. I, I, I'm not going to go there with with that. Well, I, I don't get, think that's a fair thing. Let's get some weight back on him then, please. Uh, I'm sorry. Let's get some weight back on him then. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like he's not playing well, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go there and say, oh, well, maybe if he's still like, because we don't know what what that what the issue was. Um, anyway, uh, we can move on from that. But yeah, just the anyone else? Anyone else want to throw, throw under the bus there, Steve? What's that? <laughs> What'd you say? Anyone else you want to throw under the bus there, Steve? Uh, I guess there's a lot of things you could throw under the bus right now. It just, uh, I mean, I, it mostly um, um, my biggest problem though, is a lot of it is uh, you mentioned with the Dennis Allen and, and his play calling. I just think having three defensive coordinators, especially right now looks ridiculous. And then just, I don't agree with a lot of usage of guys, Shahid, Taysom Hill, uh, Pete Carmichael, not giving the ball to Alvin Kamara more in the red zone situations. I think it's absolutely ludicrous. The guy's got AK, Alvin Kamara, one of the league's top running backs, zero, zero touchdowns this year. And I know that's, that definitely makes fantasy football fans furious. Yeah, unless you have Taysom Hill. Because Taysom <laughs> right. Hill is tied for the NFL lead in touchdowns for well, for non-quarterbacks. Right, I, I, I guess as much as – much as I'm complaining about his lack of usage, right? He's still got the bulk of the the scores for this team right now. And yeah, I mean, I mean, like if yeah, right. I mean, if the funny thing is, like, if Taysom Hill had failed more in the red zone, I think Alvin Kamara would have touchdowns because, like, you you give Taysom that chance, and he yeah. goes and he's and he he fails, and then it probably gets handed to Alvin Kamara on second down. In a lot of instances, you're scoring on first down with Taysom Hill, but yeah, no, it's 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 weird. Um, and yeah, I don't have anyone else I want to throw under the bus either, but there may be some players I want to put on a bus. Oh.